Okay then, so let's start with the session. You all hearing me okay? Yes. Okay, that's great. So today I'm talking about the automation of Hyper-V disaster recovery. Um, let's start with um, some words about myself. My name is Benedict Berger. I'm a Microsoft MVP for Hyper-V and I'm working as a solutions consultant for a company named Delanity Network Partner based in Germany. We're doing a lot of stuff around the cloud OS stack, so we're working with Windows Server, especially with Hyper-V System Center and also Windows Azure. You probably remember from earlier today where I presented the PDT GUI for automating the system center deployment and today I will talk about Hyper-E automation. You can contact me through my blog, through Twitter or through old school email um, if you like to. So why Hyper-E automation? What I want to get us into a scenario what I call the typical Monday morning scenario. We are in a post E2E world, it's a post E2E Monday morning. We came on late yesterday after E2E Sunday and we overslept and we hurried to go to work and running around the streets calling for morning beer and the only thing we are getting is some weird looks and then we are turning around the corner to see our office and our office is well pretty enlightened I would say. So the typical Monday morning disaster we are facing through and say oh this wouldn't be look so good to our servers and to have a look in our server room well our servers isn't out and running now. But you went to E2E, you learned a lot of um, technology stuff around disaster recovery scenarios and so you only think about well, still morning beer but also about hey I think I got some nice stuff to buy now because you are prepared your services are running and you have some disaster recovery strategies in place. So there's a lot more to a functioning disaster recovery scenario than just the technology. Um, I won't go into planning details um, today I just want to give an overview about the technology around Hyper-E. So Hyper-E disaster recovery scenarios are built around Hyper-E replica, so I will go very briefly um, into it and then we'll give some news on Hyper-E replica um, that went on in the last week you probably are aware of and we'll then continue with automation scenarios around PowerShell System Center and the hybrid cloud stack. Who of you is familiar with Hyper-E replica as of today? A few hands, okay, so I'll just go briefly um, into the technology which is Hyper-E Replica um, on-premise. Hyper-E Replica is a technology that is on board of Windows Server since Windows Server 2012 and it's a very easy and inexpensive way of building a disaster recovery solution around your virtual machines. It out of the box included, you don't need any additional components to leverage it, so you just um, select a virtual machine and say, hey, I want to enable it and what you get is an asynchronous synchronization to another site, another server room, the only thing you need is another Hyper-E host. It doesn't have to be in the same Active Directory domain, it's the same subnet, it doesn't need to have the same hardware, you are very independent um, on your architecture, your choose there. It's done on a per VM integration, so if we're running 100 Hyper-V VMs in our cluster or multiple hosts, we can select the ones um, we want to move to our recovery site. It's a great feature, it has some downsides, uh, especially in case of scaling and automation because as of today it doesn't have a virtual machine manager integration of the system center component out of the box, so we have to build something around it. Let's see how it works. Basically we have two data centers and you're very independent of the architecture, so I have chosen different storage topologies here. We have a high um, scaling enterprise on, on the main data center with a hyper cluster with multiple hosts and multiple virtual machines. And we have some older hardware in our second data center. We have no ZAN here. We have a SMB3 shell that's leveraging our virtual machines and we are starting an initial replica for our virtual machines over the WAN if you have the bandwidth or um, over a media and after the initial replica there will be a continuous synchronization in an interval like 30 seconds, minutes or 50 minutes to leverage this replication and then we are prepared for our Monday morning disaster a whole data center can go down our virtual machines in the second data center are powered off until a disaster happens so the virtual machines will power on from these other storage the virtual hard disk files are replicated here with hyper -E replica we get a storage redundancy regardless of a hardware uh, mirroring or copying hyper -E replica provides 
provides us with a very inexpensive um, storage redundancy solutions. And we will take a look at a real life scenario here. Just give me a moment to power this up. Here we go. What we see here is a list of a bunch of list of hyper hosts, each with running some virtual machines. I'm running here a SQL Server. It's a running hyper -V VM. It doesn't have any idea about replication until now. And all we need to do with it is just select it, enable the replication, and the, well, it's Windows, so we got a wizard. And the only thing we need to enter is a target server, the destination where we want to replicate the virtual machine into. Pasting it there. Pressing next, and the only thing I need to enter as of now, I can just finish the wizard and it would start the replication with default parameters. It's using Active Directory because both of my um, uh, hyper hosts are in the same domain. If this wasn't the case, we would use um, certificate-based authentication. And I'm compressing the um, traffic um, that uh, is done by the replication because we have plenty of CPU cycles, so we can spare some to do a zip algorithm on either side of them and save some one bandwidth on there. Now I can select which part of my virtual machine in terms of virtual hard disk I want to replicate and I deselect one virtual hard disk that contains only temporary files like a page file. It's the best practice. Uh, my virtual machine on the destination side is powered off so I don't have the need to uh, replicate the huge and often changing page file. I just deselect it. Then I configure the frequency when the replication does occur. With Windows Server 2012 R2, we can go down to up to 30 seconds. It's still asynchronous replication, so our um, production workload is not affected when the run bandwidth is low. If the change interval um, is higher than the frequency uh, 30 seconds, it's no problem. We can um, just leave out multiple interration, uh, uh, replication intervals without affecting the disaster recovery process. And I can configure additional options like virtual shadow copy snapshots for database consistency or to maintain older copies of our replication on the disaster um, site. This can get very useful if our 5 terabyte file server gets infected with a virus. We don't need to restore all data. We just boot up our disaster recovery site file server with a, an older uh, recovery point, let's say two hours ago, and uh, we are back online in just two to three minutes with a working file server there. I can choose to send the initial replication over the network or use some external media like a USB drive and send it to our disaster site. I can say, well, started over one, but let's do it on Sunday evening when I'm in the plane so nobody can get to me when I crash the bandwidth. And that's all you need to do um, to um, create the replication to our disaster site. And I select now the hyper host on the disaster site. Virtual machines are all powered off there. And I select our newly created SQL server going into the properties. And I can now extend the replication even further. It's the same result, so I will just click through it. I now enter a third replication server, which is useful for hosting companies because um, we are hosting our customers ourselves with replication services. And we are not saying to our customers, hey, we have this huge IBM, Dell, HP, or whatever server we are sending replications to. So, uh, we are offering service level agreements to our customers and say, hey, with 99.99%, we are offering you replication services. With just one replication host available, we would have a direct hardware dependency. And with the ability to replicate it to a third node, we are removing this hardware dependency there. The options are the same, only the 30 second frequency um, isn't available anymore because we won't um, get this into this short time frame there. And I don't need VSS consistency here because my source virtual machine is powered off, so I have a consistent state and just continue the other options. And so I have a three-way replication to Hyper-V. All we have done, we have done to just one VM, but we have a hundred of them, so we will need to take a look on the further automating options there. Before we go there, I want to just give a short overview about some hyper replication news um, you may have missed. Shortly after the release of Windows Server 2012 R2 update, Microsoft announced that it's now supported to backup the hyper host as uh, a backup the replica VM. 
So we can point our backup tool against our replica host on the disaster site. This is very useful if you have a lot of locations um, outside of your headquarters, if you have a lot of small locations, and you can now replicate the virtual machines to your headquarter and do one centralized backup. This was asked for in the past many times that it's now happened and uh, you can really, really save on backup efforts there. It's the same VM, it's fully consistency and just point your backup tool to a new virtual machine. All of the major um, backup programs like Ream, etc. are supporting it as of now. A huge question around Replica was always licensing. One of my absolute favorite topics. And um, when I started to ask around of licensing of Hyper Replica and came to Microsoft and said, well, if you have a Hyper Re host only for um, disaster recovery scenarios, do we need to um, buy additional Windows Server licenses? And the answer was most of the times, well, we don't know. And um, so I started digging and in short the answer is yes, you need to license the virtual machines on your replica site as well. Well, but I'm having software shown on my Windows server. This is great cold standby benefit. Yes, let's have a look at the product use rights for the cold standby benefit. And we are told, well, it's for physical server systems. Okay, but we are talking about a virtualization world. Well, SA benefits are for physical server systems, so we can't leverage it now. Asking back again one year ago, my answer from Microsoft was, yes, you still need to buy additional licenses for your disaster recovery site, but if you have software assurance on your Windows server, you can now use it for your Hyper-V VMs. But software assurance benefit does not allow you to power these VMs up until you have a disaster. So you can't power them up for testing scenarios. So basically Microsoft allowed one year ago, yes, you can use Hyper Replica with software showing benefit, but you can't test your disaster recovery solution. Uh, well, great effort there. And uh, Microsoft cleared that up um, just recently ago with the product use rights in April and they clearly stated, yeah, yes, it's um, for running virtual machines. It uh, is included in the standard software assurance benefit for Windows Server. And you even can test it once a week every 90 days, um, including in the benefit. And you can even take some time after a scenario, after a disaster scenario, to move your workloads back to a primary host. All that is covered as of today with the software assurance benefit for Windows Server. If you don't have software assurance, you still need to buy additional licenses for your replica host. And I then recommend to do a cross-replication between your two sites. It's fully supported. Any questions around that? Great, we are through the licensing part. So let's continue to the automation options um, of Hyper-V Replica and Hyper-V Disaster Recovery options. Of course, uh, we can leverage PowerShell, um, our multi-use tool um, for every single Windows server, and it's very easy to enable it um, for Hyper-V itself. I won't go through every aspect um, of this command. Let's I just uh, leave it to you in the uh, slides for referencing purposes. The first snippet just activates our Hyper-V host um, for replication, and the second um, activates the replication for a virtual machine called E2E VM1, and it's setting um, the replica host and our disaster site to replica host 2 in the domain E2E.com, and then it's just starting the initial process. Well, this is still done per VM. Now we have hundreds, uh, we have hundreds of VMs running, and um, so what I've did here is just a small script that is enabling the um, Hyper-V replica for all virtual machines running on a single host or in a single cluster. So um, you just um, take the script and run it against your environment and you will enable a replication at once for all your VMs. You should um, be prepared that this will take a little hit on your um, bandwidth and probably on your storage I.O. With uh, actual with Windows Server 2012 R2, the storage I.O. on Hyper-V replicas target servers is decreased a lot. Um, so actually we have done this with hundreds of VMs on a single server system and didn't hit into I.O. problems, but you still need a lot of network bandwidth if you do it over the run. It's very easy to initiate um, failover. You need to do a preparation on the target side and on the source side if you want to do a planned failover. If you do a planned failover, we have the ability to send the additional data from our last 30 seconds recovery point to the replica host. And when we start the replicated virtual machine, we do not lose any data. 
Of course, in an unplanned failover scenario, like we saw on the second slide, we don't have this luxury and you just um, leave this step out and then you initiate a failover in this scenario, a test failover, a test scenario does create a copy of your replicated virtual machine into an isolated network so you can test your um, uh, disaster recovery processes, you can test as exactly every bit and byte is um, replicated correctly without affecting your production workload. So now it's the time, the typical Monday morning situation where we don't test, uh, can't test it, so we do the failover while like for real, we just remove the as test part and what it's now doing is it's powering up the virtual machine on the um, second host, whatever condition the first host may be in. And this type, uh, this time I often get asked the question, okay, how can I automate this process for all my virtual machines that if a Hyper-V host in a first location has a problem, my virtual machines are powered up automatically on the disaster site. Windows Server and Hyper-V Replica don't include the option for automatic failover and I think, uh, well, that's good, it isn't included, um, but still a lot of customers want it and so I give them this script what I call a weapon of self-destruction. What it does is, well, it checks um, the availability of um, the first host running in the disaster site and if the first host isn't available and this is exactly what this um, PowerShell function does, then it's um, starting a failover on all virtual machines in this um, example just on one virtual machine. It's very easy um, to run into a split brain situation there because when you activate the script and you really want the automatic failover it will boot up all replicated virtual machines when the network link is down between the two sites. So we have booted up our domain controllers, our database servers, our um, CRM, SAP, Navision servers and 30 seconds later the network link is back. So all of our 100 virtual machines are running on two sites and I think this problem to solve is more complex than just uh, have one data center lost completely. So um, I really, really suggest to not to use it for an automatic failover um, solution. Many customers want it, want to test it, uh, want to play around with it. So here it, but here it is, but please, please be very careful with it. So these PowerShell commandlets you can take and utilize it um, in any way, you know, I'm a System Center um, fan, so we will just take um, System Center. You can also use the uh, um, SMA, the Service Management Automation, we saw earlier today in the presentation of um, Thomas and Michael, so I won't go um, into that right now, so I will just continue to the um, System Center part. I'm leveraging the good old System Center Orchestrator where we can do a lot of work with Hyper Replica and we can also include it in the other parts of our disaster recovery processes. Here's a sample run book um, that is triggered by an emergency incident. Our incident tool in this case is a System Center Service Manager and it's just setting a state where we are in a disaster situation. This disaster situation, um, we go in there and just trigger the automatic failover script we'll see uh, in a minute and it will continuously update the, um, the incident where we lock all activity around our disaster recovery scenario. So if you have um, this huge run work about failovering additional services to um, getting started, notification alerts, etc. Um, in a disaster scenario, you can just utilize the system center orchestrator to um, do the hyper replica uh, failover on the right condition. And I will get into some details here. Just you see, um, this is very easy to do. All the run works you see are available in the TechNet gallery um, as of today. They are done by an original um, guy, Charles Joy, who was originated from the um, orchestrator um, team Microsoft um, took over when the company was still called, called Opalis at the end of 2009 and he did some great work with Hyper-E Replica and um, Orchestrator and what he did here is just uh, we have some hosts we want to initiate the Hyper-E Replica so um, we prepare all virtual machines for replication, start the initial replication and continuously check if the replication is successful and uh, we are reporting a successful uh, replication or an error in the replication back to our IT service management tool so we continuously um, have uh, great monitoring on this one. 
And we have a look at the most complex one book here uh, we have done with Orchestrator and it's a fully automated uh, management solution <laughs> fully under your control. There's no Azure involved, there's just a Windows Server with Hyper-V and System Center involved and I'm leveraging the Virtual Machine Manager here because when we have Orchestrator we also have a VMM. Here um, this is for a planned failover, there is a service request or a manual trigger coming in that we want to do a planned failover um, for our data center so we get the um, status of our uh, virtual machines that we need to fail over. Basically we filter for running virtual machines that are replicated. For these uh, virtual machines I will stop the primary virtual machine on the resource data center and will then start the failover process which starts with preparing the source site, preparing the destination site and then activate um, the replication failover process. What I've included here is a little activity that delays the startup for some virtual machines. We have now 100, 100 uh, virtual machines replicated and we need to boot them up. This little delay here um, ensures that the first virtual machines we boot is in this case an Active Directory group where all my domain controllers are part in because they are really the first servers we need to get running. Then I have a second Active Directory group where all my database servers are in because sure, uh, as soon as Active Directory is up, we boot up all our database servers and uh, then we are ready to boot up all our application servers and whatever is left. If you have some, well, let's just say not perfectly programmed applications in your data center, and I'm sure every one of us uh, has seen that this could otherwise um, lead into a problem, and I've seen many um, failover tests uh, had a problem at, at this stage because the database server wasn't ready when the application server demanded it or otherwise. So this is just a wait time um, until the um, other um, servers are ready. I'll do a simple ping here and then I will um, start the other virtual machines. If you do a failover or fall back to the original data center, it really is the same operation, so you can leverage the same um, run box there. What I do here is just a quick check if this is fail back or fail over operation to um, put it into our um, service request there, and then I update the replica state and I do a reversing, a reverse of the replica process because after a failover to our disaster site, um, I want to replicate all changes made on the second side to our original forms so we can come back from this. And we will do just a quick demo on that one either. Oh, that's the wrong one. go. They're seeing this. So I'm just starting the run book from the orchestrator um, web console and I don't have an incident request right now that is filling in the details so I manually enter the value for our destination host. We want to do a failover to server 10 and we are checking if our primary site is really down on server 5, selecting our only available orchestrator server and starting an automatic failover process. Let's have a look at the runbook we are using here. It's a little different here. I've manually initialized the failover and it's automatically logging uh, incident in our uh, system center service manager and it will be continually updated as we run through this runbook. First thing, we will verify that the source host is indeed powered down to um, limit the possibility of a split brain situation. If the source is reachable via ping or via the replication status command, it will just abort the failover process and say, oh well, the initial hyper host is still running, so we don't need to do a failover. If the host is not responding to our um, connectivity requests, we uh, think the host is down and start the failover process. Um, 
to be sure this will work, we also verify that the destination host where we want to fail over our 100 virtual machines to is working. This is the case. Uh, we can reach the machine, we then do a quick um, check if all necessary services and actions are also running and we are then starting um, the virtual machines leveraging the runbook we have seen just a minute ago and I have the delay script in here so there are some sets of virtual machines starting faster than other. Here we go. Questions until here? Doesn't look so, so we'll just continue. The great thing about um, doing hyper replication on a manager plus orchestrator is you have the full process under control and you can um, put into every action you would like to um, just prepare your disaster site or to notify um, some people or to um, start some other services that are outside of your virtualization world. This is um, not, uh, not uh, very easy with prepared solutions where you can't modify every aspect. If we don't leverage these existing templates for one books, um, we needed to build these on our own. Uh, Microsoft is offering also a complete end-to-end -end solution for um, disaster recovery. It's leveraging the public cloud, it's running in Windows Azure, and it's today still called the Hyper Recovery Manager. Who has heard of the Hyper Recovery Manager before? Quick show of hands. One and a half hands are going up. Um, Hyper Recovery Manager is a um, leveraged um, where we often as of today and I'm also not using it in production environment as of today but this will change and I will tell you why this is. Hyper -re, um, Recovery Manager is running in Windows Azure but it's not leveraging Windows Azure as a replication target as of today it's just monitoring and orchestrating the process so we don't need to check from our destination site if our primary host is up we can do this from Windows Azure and the Hyper Recovery Manager does a complete configuration starting with enabling the Hyper -re replica with applying the right authentication certificates and in, uh, starting up to build the replicas for all our hundred virtual machines. So all the configuration stuff we have done manually or with PowerShell or with Orchestrator will, da will be done through um, the Hyper Recovery Manager orchestrated from us in Windows Azure. Windows Azure does not talk directly to our Hyper-V hosts or Hyper-V clusters. It will leverage the Virtual Machine Manager. So there's a small plug-in for the VMM you can download from the Azure portal that will integrate um, the Azure orchestration to VMM. If you don't have a Virtual Machine Manager as of today, you can't leverage um, this service. There is no direct connect from the Hyper-V hosts to Windows Azure. And um, the Library Recovery Manager um, do host a great set of templates to do some failover processes and tests. Let's have a look at the architecture um, right here. We do have running our Azure services. It's currently priced on a model where you um, pay, I think it's 11 until 12 euros per month per virtual machine you want to protect with the service. So in my opinion, it's very expensive as of today. And um, you download the plugin to into your virtual machine manager. I'm recommending you have a virtual machine manager already in both your hyper sites because if you are um, losing the site where the VMM is running, you also lose the capability for recovery manager. You can do it with simple one VMM, especially in a lab purpose, but you shouldn't do this in a production environment and the replication of data itself is done through the Hyper-V hosts itself. Let's have a quick look at this one. go. So this is Windows Azure. I have an empty subscription there. Scrolling down to the recovery services section. The first thing we need to create is called a recovery manager vault where we all store all the necessary configuration that is um, done through Azure. Just create a name here and select the data center where we want to do it, select the MSTN subscription where we want to do it and create the recovery ward. 
This will usually take about two or three minutes, so I just speed this up here. Here we go. And we then get the options to manage the authentication. Windows Azure and the Virtual Machine Manager um, won't operate with any usernames or passwords. They purely rely on certificate-based authentication. So I will upload the public key of our management certificates. The private key will rely on the hosts where I'm running the Virtual Machine Manager and I won't upload them to Windows Azure. After that, I get the download link to the plugin for Virtual Machine Manager. I just told you about. We are just running it, selecting it, and to install it, the VMM service must not be running, so I will just stop it from Task Manager here. VMM service, VMM service, here it is. Just stopping the service, and then we can continue to install the plugin. Um, interestingly, the plugin starts the service, but it can't stop it. I don't know why. Um, so we just install this Windows Azure Hyper -E Recovery Manager provider, as it's called today and integrate it to Windows Azure. And now we select the private key file of the certificate we just upload to Windows Azure to do the authentication process. I took this one, select it. It reads in and now it offers me the re recovery vault we just created and select and yes, I want to leverage this one. I enter the information from my virtual machine manager servers as it's not identified automatically and after another 30 seconds I am done with initiating the registration on my Hyper-V -re recovery manager. How did you do that? The network? Sorry? Using the wireless? No, this is pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is not live. Uh, if this were live, we would now have to wait some hours until we replicate hundreds of virtual machines. And um, I will just jump these two hours now forward in time. And I have successfully replicated 100 virtual machines. So. Let's have a look at this either. Here we go. I have um, two virtual machine servers running. In the back you see all my VMs running and my primary site. And here in the front you see I have another virtual machine manager server with another VMM cloud. So we are selecting here on a VMM cloud um, focus and the same virtual machines are replicated and in a stopped state. I go back to the uh, recovery services we configured earlier. And now with 12 virtual machines configured for protection they are listed here in my primary um, VMM cloud as a protected item. So we are ready for a failover. What our recovery manager does is to um, initiate the replica for all the VMs to register the management certificates for all these VMs so we can do authentication. And we can now configure um, the recovery and um, options for all of our virtual machines. So I'm just editing this once for 100 VMs and not per VM as we have seen earlier today in the Hyper-V Recovery Manager, but uh, in the Hyper-V Manager, but it's the same set of options we are leveraging here. Also in the uh, Recovery Manager, there are recovery plans. Recovery plans are, are really, really good compared to um, orchestrator run books we have seen earlier today, or like um, uh, SMA PowerShell workflows, where we can now just run a workflow. I have um, here implemented a similar workflow like I did in Orchestrator. I've built some groups to the startup order of our virtual machines and I have included a small PowerShell script that is preparing my um, destination site. It's um, ensuring that all the destination hosts are up and that all the lab and non-production VMs are shut down. So I have the performance ready to host the production workload in a disaster recovery site. You have also the ability to add a manual action. So the um, automatic 
and the automatic process will not continue until you say, oh, okay, this is now the time where I have to reboot the switches in our disaster recovery site. I can't do this automatically because they don't have an API or whatever for that. So I have to go there and click the reset button to reset the MAC address filters and to make sure that the virtual machine with the same MAC address that was running there one minute earlier can now run successfully on the other side. So I enter the instructions and just say, okay, now I did this and I am saving this to our workflow process. Now going back and I now can utilize all three options um, of replication failover Hyper offers us today. We have the plan failover where we try to replicate um, the, um, all data to the secondary site. So if there is still some replication interval missing, we are waiting um, for this to complete before we start for the failover process. In an unplanned failover, we don't have the luxury of this because there is no more data there we can uh, replicate. So we just boot up the primary system and uh, in this moment our replication site will automatically become the primary site. If we bring back up our um, secondary or pr old primary site, let's say four days later after rebuilding our server systems, it will automatically become the secondary site and all data changed to uh, the original disaster site will get back replicated without affecting the production workload. So our users can still continue to work on the um, secondary site and then we need a downtime whenever to switch the workloads back to the old primary data center. Basically you shut down all the virtual machines on the second site and boot them up on the primary site. So we have seen this earlier and so i not do this now and the third option, the test failover, uh, you just select a bunch of virtual machines like a domain controller, a database server and some application servers and Hyper-V uh, Recovery Manager will create an isolated network, will boot up the virtual machines in an isolated network and um, then you can just test your processes without affecting production workloads. This makes it a lot easier um, to do a test of your processes for emergency failovers. So if you really want to do an unplanned failover, you need to fill out two confirmations um, because we are affecting hundreds of VMs here and I say, well, let's just do it and we have seen the outcome of this already. The reason I said, well, this is not leveraged um, many times today, and I hope this is going to change soon, is an announcement earlier this month in Tech in North America that um, shortly Windows Azure or Microsoft Azure itself will be added as a disaster site for Hyper-V. So Hyper-V Recovery Manager will be renamed to Azure Site Recovery, and we can replicate our virtual machines to Microsoft Azure. It is using the same functionality um, we have seen earlier. Um, the only difference is um, that on our disaster site here, we had virtual machines sitting that were offline and waiting for a disaster to happen and to get started. In Windows Azure, a virtual machine for our replicated data won't be created until we have a disaster or until we have a disaster test. So we have just the storage sitting there of our virtual machines, let's say a terabyte of data and no virtual machine. If we now um, hit the failover button, I just um, hit in failover and recovery manager, it will create a set of 100 virtual machines based on the configuration we have saved there. And this is a great uh, way of doing it in my opinion because we just need some storage. To move the data into Azure, it's incoming traffic to Azure, it doesn't cost us a cent. Incoming uh, traffic to Azure is completely free. So we just need some storage in Azure and um, wow, this is so expensive either. It's a lot cheaper than um, building a disaster site. So this is a great option for companies that um, can't leverage to build another data center or don't have a second server room. And you still need the virtual machine manager component here. We still need it um, on one side, so you have to buy a system center license if you don't own them. It's a requirement, um, well, I'm not so happy about, but um, it's still a lot cheaper than by building another server room there. And um, the concept there are really the same, so we can just 
just um, use uh, Microsoft Azure as a disaster site and leveraging the Azure site recovery as a complete end-to-end -end solution. As of now, um, I am not using the Hyper Recovery Manager myself, but I'm using uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, what I'm doing away, I'm running um, the options we have seen earlier, especially the System Center Orchestrator options for running Hyper. I'm running this Orchestrator server in Azure. So basically, um, I have built the um, Recovery Manager option into Azure, and it's a lot um, cheaper than paying per protected VM. The only thing I need is a small virtual machine running in Azure. Or it's just running on one CPU core and two gigs of RAM, it's fine for checking um, the availability of my hyper hosts and it protects 100 virtual machines without the need of paying per VM or configure per VM. So what we have seen as uh, hyper, -re, um, hyper -re disaster recovery automation is really built around um, hyper -re replica. We have seen the out-of-the-box experience um, with PowerShell. We have seen the uh, more customizable option via System Center if you have System Center available. And we have seen the hybrid scenario where we use the hyper -re recovery manager and sure, uh, soon we will use the Azure Site Recovery Manager. Azure Site Recovery has been announced to go in public uh, preview in June, so starting somewhere from tomorrow and the next 30 days, so we can all try it out and utilize it. So there is no final licensing model for Azure Site Recovery announced yet, so this could become a caveat. You never need, uh, you never know uh, with Microsoft licensing um, how this plays out, but in my opinion, this is a really great option uh, to get more um, production workloads and disaster workloads to Microsoft Azure. If you're running all 100 virtual machines on site and you don't have the um, equipment to do something like testing a new application, this is also a very easy way to do this. Just uh, replicate your virtual machines to Azure and then do a test failover. You will get 100 VMs automatically created and you pay per minute. So let's, let's say you just test your application in a complete copy of your data center and delete this data center one hour later. So it's very inexpensive to do these tests um, of workloads. So this is a short overview about the um, automation options of Hyper Replica. Um, I think there are some great options in there and if there are any further questions, uh, just contact me through the channels I gave you. Thank you very much. Thank you.